Thank you, that was a wonderful flight. Now, have you ever wondered, we've landed, have you ever wondered what happens next? Uh, we're all leaving, coming off the aircraft now, going on to our connecting flights, or those of us staying here in Doha will head home or to our hotels. But what happens to the aircraft? Where's that gonna go? Now, we know the cleaning crew's gonna come in, they're gonna restock everything, but how does that happen? And where does this aircraft go? And who does the dishes, right? There's lots of dishes. On a flight like this, it'd be over a thousand dirty meal trays. Who does them? I've always wanted to find out. Well, I've in Doha because I've been given exclusive access, behind the scenes access, to the Qatar operations. I'm gonna answer those questions, so stick around and let's uh, find out the answers together. This is gonna be one epic trip. Can't wait to share it all with you. We're at gate Charlie 6 and QR720 has just landed from Seattle. 14 hours in the air and the 300 or so passengers, uh, which obviously I can't film, are disembarking behind me. And they're uh, going on to their connecting flights or uh, to their hotels or homes here in Doha. This aircraft, that's what I'm interested in. What's gonna happen next? Now the crew, uh, buses are already here. They're waiting to take the crew once they've finished their, uh, their tasks on board to their terminal. This aircraft will then be turned around and it's going to somewhere very special uh, and very special and close to my heart, my hometown, somewhere you should all visit, Adelaide. It's going to turn into QR914 to Adelaide and then on to Auckland. That's a 13 hour trip just to get to Adelaide. So stick around and we'll see what happens to this aircraft as they get it ready. So all the passengers are off and we're now allowed onto the aircraft. The, the cleaning crew are already busy cleaning and uh, the last of the cabin crew are just disembarking. These are the hardest working guys in the travel industry. You'll never see crew walking through the terminal here in Doha. They have their very own dedicated terminal, which is a story for another video. Just another reason to hit that subscribe button and notification bell. Standing at this open back door, I was in absolute avgeek heaven as the airport activity outside was buzzing. Meanwhile, inside, a crew of 20 cleaners were doing their magic. Rubbish, pillows and blankets were being removed, surfaces wiped down and floors vacuumed. These guys don't stop and within 25 minutes, the aircraft was spotless. At the same time, on the right hand side of the aircraft, three trucks were already in position and the massive task of unloading was in full swing. First off were the blankets, pillows and mattresses. Following this were the various carts and containers from the four galleys on board. After a 14 hour long haul flight like this, there are up to 120 individual carts to be offloaded. They contain everything from used meal trays through to glasses, drinks and tea and coffee supplies. Unloading the aircraft is done by a team from the catering department, but they work in perfect unison with the cleaning crew. This is vital because the space on board is limited and everything happens at the same time. What struck me the most is that everybody knew exactly what they were doing and just quietly got on with it. There was nobody shouting instructions and definitely no raised voices. The number of people involved depend on the type of turnaround. For tight turnarounds, they allocate additional staff to make sure the onward flight departs on time. The standard turnaround they aim for is 75 minutes from the time the cleaning crew get on board to the time the aircraft is dressed, loaded and ready for the next passengers to board. This seat here, 8 Alpha, will be my seat in two nights time when I fly back to Adelaide. You see, the previous passengers have left it uh, used and the crew here will now transform it back into that beautiful Q suite that we know and love. It is to one of the best, if not the best business class in the sky. Really, really love this product. It is so, so good. And this really is the magic of the Q-Suite. These TV screens, they open up. You've got two seats facing this way. And here, two seats facing this way. That screen lowers. 
and a family of four or four friends can dine together and enjoy the flight experience together. I did do a review on that when it was just released. I traveled with my parents and my brother. I'll put the link to that review in uh, the description below. If you ever get the chance, do it. It's so good. Meanwhile, below the wing, as they call it, the baggage and freight from the Seattle flight had already been unloaded and the aircraft is waiting to be loaded for Adelaide. Freight will be loaded first, followed by passengers' bags, as they allow for passengers with tight connections. And of course, the refuelers come and do their stuff. Meanwhile, next to us, an A330 was just pushing back to start its journey to Nairobi. The flight deck, what happens there? Well, the pilots obviously shut the plane down and they uh, got on the bus with the crew and they finished their shift. The engineers have now come on board and uh, I can't go in there because they're doing all their checks, making sure that everything is right and prepared for the next flight. Um, about 60 minutes prior to departure, the new crew will come on board, including obviously the flight deck crew and the cabin crew, and they'll then start to get ready for their flight through to, uh, through to Adelaide. So, uh, lots happening over here with the cabin cleaning and preparing it. Lots happening downstairs with the unloading of everything and a lot happening in the uh, flight deck, on the flight deck. Slowly the cabin is starting to take shape. The cleaning crew have left. The uh, crew have already started putting the uh, blankets and pillows in place to prepare for this next flight. Um, I just saw the engineer come on board. He was checking one of these seats here. Uh, obviously the previous crew would have reported that uh, maybe the recline or something wasn't working with it. So uh, the engineers come and, and uh, fix those little faults in preparation for uh, obviously that next flight. The main economy class galley is spotlessly clean. It's been totally transformed from when it was arriving here from Seattle and is now ready for everything to be loaded on board. With the aircraft totally de-Seattled, it was now time to load for Adelaide. And this starts with the arrival of a whole new fleet of trucks. In the galley, each cart and box is coated and has its own specific spot. This is all designed so that it is as ergonomic and practical as possible for the crew during the flight. It also ensures that every time they fly, everything is in the same place. With the cabin dressing almost complete and the aerobridge given a final clean, it's time for the new flight and cabin crew to board. They'll do their final checks, place their business class amenities kits, and then boarding can commence. Okay. Enjoy the flight. Bye bye. So the crew have just boarded and they're going to get ready. This flight is ready to take off in about uh, an hour. Let's go and find out what happened to those dishes. We then travelled across the airport to the Qatar Aircraft Catering Company Operations Centre. This place blew my mind. Upon arrival, I was welcomed by my host, Acting Vice President Victor Cheng and his leadership team, who gave me an overview of exactly what they do here. The numbers involved in this building are simply staggering. At 69,000 square metres, this is the world's largest single-site catering centre and they produce over 170,000 meals per day, every single day. They also process 40 tonnes of laundry and put 1.5 million items through their dishwashers every single day. The 4,200 people working in this facility, which operates 24-7, are the secret behind Qatar's incredible onboard dining and the reason they win so many awards. But obviously, catering is more than just the onboard dining. This facility provides every single item you find on board, from the pillows, the blankets and amenities kits, right through to the toilet paper and hand wash in the bathrooms. On this visit, my mission was to find out how the logistics behind this entire operation works and how it plays a vital role in getting an aircraft ready for flight. 
I couldn't wait, but before they let us in, we were given a full safety induction and fitted with our safety gear. So the safety equipment starts at the very bottom with boots and goes right to the very top. Look at this, we're all, we're all kitted up and ready to go. Yeah. Oh. Now we're all ready to go. This is actually, remember, this building is completely airside. So the moment you walk through MOI checkpoint, you're automatically airside. However, this dock is landside. This dock is where we receive on a daily basis, by the minute, everything coming in, whether from ingredient raw materials from supplier, fresh vegetables or fruits, or even meat products, or equipment. Every one of those boxes and pallets coming in from the land side of the operations is first x-rayed and screened by security. Fresh fruit and veggies are then immediately washed and placed in the chiller. Dry goods go into storage until use. They have a capacity for 5,600 pallets here. This is the, uh, the main part of the warehouse. This is called the high store for obvious reasons. Well, the goods are here, but Victor's just told me behind this panel, behind this door here, that's where the good stuff is. That's where that's the bulk store of uh, all their alcohol. Now, I probably shouldn't, but that's where it's kept. There was no time for drinking because I still needed to find out who was doing the dishes from the Seattle flight. I was about to walk into one of the most well-oiled operations I've ever seen. Luckily for me, the team had held off unloading two of the four trucks from the Seattle flight until I arrived, camera in hand. So here they are, the trucks that came off uh, QR720 are now being offloaded. So first it's the blankets, and here's the first of the trolleys coming off now. So the sustainability part of this starts already as soon as the trucks are loaded. You've got orange pallets and yellow pallets. The yellow pallets is clean, right? So that will all be taken to be recycled. Orange is dirty, so that goes for washing. This facility processes between seven and 8,000 dirty carts per day. On top of that, there's the laundry, but more on that later. What happens once a cart has been unloaded off the truck? Well, let's follow the first of the Seattle carts through the process. At this point, the doors are opened and the label is removed. In lots of two, they are then loaded onto the cart transportation system, which delivers the carts directly to one of 19 dishwashing lines. As the carts arrive at one of the 19 dishwashing lines, there's a team ready and waiting for them. The first step is to remove the cutlery, which is sorted and pre-soaked in a cleaning fluid before washing. Unused cutlery is separated so it can be unwrapped before washing. Next, any recyclables are removed. This includes tray liners, empty bottles and cans, as well as clean, unused items such as water bottles, butters and jams. These unused items are ultimately donated to charity, whilst the empty used bottles and cans are recycled. Items for the dishwasher are removed next. For economy class, this includes dessert dishes and the meal trays themselves. The rest is then fed into the vacuum operated waste disposal system. With between seven and 8,000 carts processed a day, this room is a hive of constant activity. I then moved around to the other side to see the dishes coming out of the washers. This is where I got my first glimpse at just how efficient the process of preparing for flights is. As the first and business class glassware comes out of the dishwasher, it is quality controlled and then packed straight into a trolley for a specific flight. The same happens with the plates and crockery. So, to tell the 
this is our standard package. Yes. So if you look at the label, there was stuff. For example, this is this is to Munich departure. This one is for Munich. Right. Okay. Munich so departure. already the already the flight is designated. Yes. And here's the label for the Adelaide flight. So from washing, it's now into the equipment packing department. Have a look at this. This is where they wrap the economy class cutlery. They make 100,000 of these sets a day. You know all those long flights where uh, you're between meals and you need a midnight snack? This is where it comes from. This is where the, uh, the snack boxes are packed. Boyer, well, he's packing it. He will pack this rubber and send it back. They will load it on the flight and take so, it. So this has come off an aircraft? Off an aircraft. So partly used? Partly used. So, he so, will... so that then comes over here, Absolutely. gets repacked yes. as a complete kit for an aircraft. Correct. And then goes back back here That's to correct. then go into the, the box to go onto the aircraft. That's correct. Wow. Okay. So that was the dry goods. Now, we're talking liquids. All your drinks on board come from this room. So your drink carts, say your soft drinks. What happens here is this is a top-up station. So the partly used carts, or the used carts that come off the flight, still have drinks in them. So those partial trays go up the top here, they get repacked, restocked, they come here, and they go straight back into the carts. So this is the whole top-up area. Again, super efficient. We've seen the dishes being done. We've seen the food being restocked, the dry goods and the drinks. Now what happens to the blankets? Let's head to the laundry and find out. This is where we start going through your dirty laundry. Here we see the blankets from the Seattle flight being unpacked and fed into the washing process. They have the capacity to wash, fold and pack 100,000 blankets a day. They use a machine called a CBW, which stands for Continuous Batch Washing. Basically, the blankets are fed into the machine on this conveyor belt, washed in batches of approximately 130 blankets, and come out the other end clean and dry. It takes a blanket about 55 minutes to go through the process. The volumes are simply staggering, and as part of its sustainability program, Qatar Airways donates almost 40,000 blankets and 8,000 mattresses to charity every year. Obviously it's not just blankets, there's also napkins, pillowcases, uniforms and even economy class seat covers. All up, this place processes 40 tonnes of laundry a day. I'll never complain about doing the laundry ever again. So we've now come into the clean room. So coming out this conveyor belt are all the clean blankets from that continuous batch washing. And in this operation, they fold them, pack them, and get them ready for flight. You've probably gathered this is, this is an operation on an industrial scale. The volumes here are just incredible. Let's first look at what happens to the economy class blankets. The clean, dry blankets are folded in half and fed into this giant machine at a rate of seven per minute through six feeding stations. Using shots of air, the blankets are then folded and fed into the packing machine. Once packed, they're bagged up and ready for their next flight. Business class duvets or blankets get special treatment. They are hand folded and then fed into a roller for packing. And here we have the pillowcases that we saw earlier on being put on those Q-Suite pillows.
And in the next room here, we have the staging area where all of the carts, all the dry goods, are ready and grouped into their flight. So this one is going to Edinburgh. The one over here, this bundle, is going to the Prague flight. There's 80 flights being prepped here at the moment that are going to be taking off in the next few hours. So we've seen how all the individual components are prepared. Now we're into the final mile. And this is where it all comes together and it gets shipped to the aircraft. This 46 bay loading dock is where it all comes together. Here the various carts, blankets and pillows etc coming from the dry goods dispatch area are matched up with the fresh food from the kitchens upstairs and sent to the aircraft. So as you can see, batch A starts from 45 minutes after midnight departure yes. all the way to 0555 hours in the morning. Right. Okay. But this particular group of battery flights are designated for this particular chiller, number four. Right. Each okay. chiller is mapped out in such a way. Yes. Because each chiller is corresponding to the zone light outside the chiller. Like the rest of the operation, this blew me away. The logistics of getting everything to the right door of the right aircraft at the right time and doing it hundreds of times a day is just mind boggling. The team here is simply incredible. And I feel so blessed that I've been able to get a glimpse at how they make it all work. And just like that, I've bought it and I'm sitting on QR914 through to Adelaide the very flight that uh, I saw them prepping for two nights ago. What an incredible experience these few days in Doha have been and doing the behind the scenes filming with Qatar. Um, I now have a far greater appreciation for just how many people and how complex the operation is that makes a flight like this possible for everybody behind the scenes. Um, all of the people that make this and every other flight and the magic of flight and the air travel happen, thank you. Um, on behalf of me and all of the passengers, uh, thank you. I'm incredibly grateful, obviously, to, uh, to Qatar Airways uh, for pulling the strings and, and enabling me to go behind the scenes. I'm, uh, it's not something that uh, very many people ever get to do, and I'm very, very thankful for it. It's really cool actually now sitting here and knowing exactly where that blanket came from, how it was folded, how it was washed, how it was wrapped and how it got onto the aircraft, as well as the pillows, the pillowcases, the amenities kits and, uh, and even this glass of champagne. So with that, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Certainly uh, check out the rest of my channel, subscribe because there's, uh, there's a few really good behind the scenes videos on the way, as well as flight reviews and travel videos as well. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Here's to one sensational flight.